Greetings, salutations, respect and love. I am Scott. You're in the prod corner and today, yeah, I switched it up, man. I was going to do something different today. Uh, I got all worked up uh, last week when Rick Beato put his uh, What's Wrong With Modern Music episode out. I was going to do a response to it and then I saw everybody and their monkeys, uncles doing responses to it. Uh, Pete Pardo, Andy Edwards, uh, even Anthony Fant, uh, whatever his name is, Anthony Fantino, he just did one this morning. So I don't need to uh, tell Rick Beato how wrong he is. He knows he's wrong, but uh, what a great episode, man. I'm so jealous. I wish I would have done that episode. But today, as the title and thumbnail indicated, I'm going a different direction. I am going to be talking about the 12 worst well, 10, where's 12, where's what? I'm doing 12 today. Worst songs that ever hit number one. And uh, I was going to do of all time. And then I just, I started at 1970. And uh, by the time I got done with 1979, I had like 50. So I'm like, I guess I'm going to do these in sections. I looked at the 60s and there obviously uh, weren't as many as the 70s. So I'm doing the 70s first. Um, yeah, the 60s were actually really good as I was going through. There weren't as many awful uh, number one songs, although you do have some real clunkers in there. We'll get around to doing the 60s and the 80s and the 90s, but you know how it goes. I'm going to be looking at the numbers. If the numbers don't do great, well, I'm not going to do it. So yeah, don't, don't hold me to it. I've always been a big fan of singles, you know, as a little kid. The album format wasn't even really a, a big deal until Sgt. Pepper. So I grew up in the era of the 45. And the first song I fell in love with was Happy Together by the Turtles. And ever since the 45 was a very important thing for me. I must have listened to that song a hundred times a day in my dad's den. Just ridiculous. I absolutely adore uh, singles and the concept of a song just all by itself matters so much. And here's some songs from the 70s that I don't want to see in the comments because I don't care. I love these songs and they all hit number one and they're all great. I do not want to hear anybody dissing Seasons in the Sun. Just stop it. It's amazing. What a great song. Billy Don't Be a Hero. Leave it alone. I love that song. The Night Chicago Died. Yeah, both versions. Uh, Bo Donaldson and the Paper Lays version. I love them both. Leave Donny Osmond alone, One Bad Apple. I'm not going to hear anybody talking crap about the Osmonds. How about Tony Orlando and Dawn? Boy, they had two smash hits in the 70s, and they're both great. Knock Three Times and Tie a Yellow Ribbon. I don't want to see those in the comments. There were 252 songs that hit number one in the 70s. Here are the 12 worst of a man, and I'm starting at number 12, and this thing's terrible. Uh, what an awful song. It's called Want Ads by the Honeycone. Who are these people? Well, apparently it's three girls uh, doing like Motown kind of stuff. Uh, they were signed to Hot Wax Records, which was a, 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 a label that started off when Holland Dozier and Holland all left uh, Motown. So there's definitely a Motown feel to this, but it's just awful. It's a terrible song, man. Ugh. The leader of the band was Edna Wright. That's Darlene Love's sister. And sadly, she left us in 2020 and left us with the number one hit that uh, was number one in June of 1970. A forgotten relic, if ever there was one, at number 11. This one's just awful. It probably should be higher on this list of awfulness. It's Paul Anka and you're having my baby. Just no. What's wrong with this guy, man? Not once in the lyric does he say it's our child is always mine. It's mine. You're proving you love me. Oh, oh, you got to prove you love me by having a baby. And then, you know, you got to keep in mind that Roe v. Wade was enacted about a year before this song comes out. So he's talking about abortion in this song. He's gaslighting this chick not to have an abortion. It's just terrible. It's so bad that he needed uh, Odia Coates to sing along. It is a duet, I guess. Try to maybe soften it up a little bit and, you know, maybe make it not seem quite so misogynistic. It's just awful. Odia Coates, uh, fantastic. She deserved better. She left us in 1991. Anyway, at number 10, another one that I just got to shake my head and say, absolutely not. It's Cher and her second number one hit. 
half breed. Yeah, her first one was Gypsies, Triumphs, and Thieves. And that one wasn't all that bad. I kind of like it. It had a little bounce to it, cool melody. Not bad at all, but this song, half breed, just awful. It spent two weeks at number one in October of 1973. The only redeeming quality for this piece of junk is that the Wrecking Crew are actually uh, the backing band. And uh, anything they do is going to sound really good. But, oh, this song's just terrible, man. Uh, just just awful. Uh, you know what it's about. It's bad. At number nine. <sighs> yeah, calling all them uh, convoy trend poor. Yeah, getting the rocking chair there. Oh, man. The whole CB radio thing was going crazy in the 70s. And, uh... C.W. McCall put out a song called Convoy that hit number one in January of 1976. I guess C.W. McCall was a made-up name. Uh, it was actually two guys, one of whom is Chip Davis, who would later on go ahead and form Mannheim Steamroller. So how do you go from, uh, you know, CB radio uh, uh, novelty song to... Uh, uh, Christmas music uh, champions, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, Convoy, just awful. It spawned a movie and everything. Just terrible at number eight. Another one that should definitely be higher. Oh, I just... Ta the cringe factor on this is off the chart. It's Ringo Starr and You're 16. A song that spent one week at the top of the chart in January of 1974. Yeah, we're, we're, no, it's not Ringo's fault. It was a cover song. Yeah, it was a cover song. It was written by the Sherman Brothers, <coughs> who actually went ahead and wrote stuff like Chim Chimmery and, uh, you know, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and stuff like that for Disney movies. It was a, a remake. I guess this was a hit for a guy named Johnny Burnett. In 1960, hit number eight. But Ringo's version hit number one. And the pedophilia is just disgusting on this song. It's absolutely revolting. Uh, this song should never be, be played ever again. It's just absolutely a, a an ode to uh, uh, child molestation. It's disgusting, Ringo. You're better than that at number seven. It's Sammy Davis Jr. and his one and only number one hit, The Candyman. Oh, man, this thing spent three weeks at number one in the summer of 1972. Oh, and it uh, originally showed up in uh, Willy Wonka, the movie that came out in 1971, with a different singer, and I guess uh, Sammy Davis made it his own. There were a few different versions of that song floating around out there, but even Sammy Davis hated this song. He absolutely hated it, and uh, funny, it's the one song people remember him by. It always works out that way. At number six in our list of despicableness, it's the uh, uh, Starland Vocal Band and Afternoon Delight. Oh, man, this thing's terrible. Spent two weeks at the top of the chart in July of 1976. I remember the summer of 76, man, because it was a big, big deal. You know, the tall ships all sailed into New York Harbor. And, you know, patriotic fever was, you know, at an all-time high and whatnot. And this song was on the radio that summer nonstop. Spent two weeks at number one, written by Bill Danoff. Uh, his wife was in the band also, Taffy Nevert. And uh, if you're a, a practitioner of pop music, those two names should mean a little something to you. They also wrote a little song called Take Me Home Country Roads, which hit number one in 1971 for John Denver. A song the married couple actually wrote for Johnny Cash, and he turned it down. John Denver made a big hit out of it. But Afternoon Delight, Starland Vocal Band, terrible, awful here we go, top five of miserableness. I'm going with Ray Stevens and the Streak. Oh, this awful song hit uh, number one in uh, May of 1974 and spent three weeks at the top of the chart. Now, Ray is an awful human being. He's just not a good guy at all. You know, he did a hit. He had a hit called Everything is Beautiful. And the lyrics in the song are talking about, you know, tolerance and stuff. Tolerance? This is the guy that wrote Ahab the Arab, one of the most uh, racist songs of all time. To his credit, I do like his uh, 1969 hit, Guitar Zan. That one was great. Uh, yeah, but that Everything is Beautiful song in 1970. What a hypocrite, man. And now he's just doing all these songs about how he loves Trump. It's just ridiculous. But The Streak was his only number one hit. Uh, it's terrible. Streaking was all the rage. People were, you know, jumping onto baseball fields, naked and running around. It was ridiculous. I'm so glad that craze ended quick. At number four... 
Yeah, let's talk about Michael Jackson and Ben. Oh, oh, what a bad song. This came off his uh, second album. Uh, the song spent one week at number one in October 1972, and Ben is a song from the movie of the same name, which I guess was the sequel to another movie called Willard. These are all movies about rats. <laughs> Nobody cares about rats. This is Mike's first number one as a solo artist. Certainly wouldn't be his last. The song was written by Don Black and Walter Sharp. How dare you? How dare you? It's just terrible. At number three, in awfulness, 70s edition. I'm going with You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone. Oh, yeah, you know her dad was Pat Boone. But this sucker spent 10 weeks at number one in 1977. 10 weeks, man. Uh... They had changed the rules on the Billboard charts in 1960. So at that point, it had spent more time at number one than any other single until uh, Boys to Men uh, in 1992 changed all that. But this is a horrible song. Uh, it's written by Casey uh, Sysik for the movie of the same name. And I guess they had another singer sing it in the movie. And uh, Debbie Boone just basically put her vocals on top of the existing uh, musical tracks. Lazy, terrible, awful, everything that was bad about the 70s all wrapped up into one song at number two. I, I can't believe there's two songs worse than You Light Up My Life from the 70s, but here we go. Oh, in the December of 1974, Carl Douglas releases a song called Kung Fu Fighting, and it's just god-awful. Nobody cared about this thing. I guess it took like two or three months for anybody to even notice it. I guess the UK dance clubs started playing it. Uh, Carl was a Jamaican singer who kind of fell off the face of the earth after this, but... Uh, you know, kung fu movies are like really cool and exciting, and it had a dancey beat to it. 1974, you're, you're, the disco thing is starting. You had the Hughes Corporation with Rock the Boat earlier that year. This kind of was one of those songs that got that disco train moving along. And, uh, 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 and two years later, uh, the number one awful song from the 70s dropped as a, almost a direct result. And at number one for the worst song of the 70s, that hit number one on the Billboard charts. It's Disco Duck by Rick Dees and his uh, cast of idiots. All right, that's what he called it. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> but I'm going to prove how right he was. This is a cat who was a DJ in Memphis at WMPS. And uh, the song started breaking, and his his paymasters told him, you're not allowed to even mention the song, let alone play it. Well, I guess one day he actually mentioned it, and he got the axe summarily. They were worried about conflict of interest and whatnot. Um, but as the song started building and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, they had to rehire him. So they did. They brought him back. Uh, but this guy, clearly a member of the cast of Idiots, because uh, uh, a couple years later, uh, the makers of Saturday Night Fever asked him, hey, can we use your song in the movie? And he said, yeah, sure, no problem. So the song is in the movie. But then they asked him, hey, can we put it on the soundtrack album? And Rick's like, nah, nah, I don't want that on the you know third biggest selling album of all time. That would be stupid, right? Oh, the cast of Idiots definitely included Rick Dees himself. That song is absolutely terrible. I absolutely hate it. So what am I doing tomorrow, man? I, I think I'm just going to go freewheeling it like this. It's kind of fun just doing whatever I feel like when I wake up the next morning. But uh, the one thing I do know that's happening is this Sunday. Uh, Sunday Prog Stream live at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh me and a cast of, uh, you know, experts or whatever. We're going to be talking about Electric Light Orchestra. I I really haven't talked a whole lot about ELO on the channel, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, I love you. Peace in the Middle East. Free the Ukraine. Free Tibet. Free everybody. And God save the king. Save King Chucky. Oh, yeah. Chucky needs your saving. Absolutely does. That song gone got that cancer. Yeah, bring that song to America. Make him swim. Oh, make him 
Kim Slim. Oh, it'll be good for him. And then we'll lay some hands on that boy. Woo, yeah. Yeah, we got some spells and incantations that gonna make that boy right as rain. And then our prayer warriors standing by with their thoughts and prayers for the king. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we're gonna do some uh, dancing with some snakes. We're gonna bring them rattlesnakes out. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna dance with them snakes. Oh, here we are. And King Chucky's gonna be just fine. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.